Today's lesson is uh, continuing with uh, similar triangles, but focusing on right triangles. As a matter of fact, focusing on one right triangle and splitting it up. So what I'm going to do is you can see that I have a uh, right triangle here, uh, tri right triangle uh, BAR, and what I'm going to do is make an altitude to the hypotenuse. So if I make an altitude, it's going to be perpendicular to the hypotenuse, and we will call that point E. Now, by doing so, I have now created three triangles. I have my original triangle, I have a small right triangle here, and I have a medium-sized triangle here. Now, uh, it may not be obvious to all of us, but if I take this triangle REA and I orient it, I will I'll scale it down. You can see the right angle's there. Uh, that's angle E. Uh, R is the short side, and A is over there. Okay? And then there's another smaller triangle, another right triangle. And it has a right angle E. It has an angle B, vertex, and an angle R. When I divide them out like this, it becomes a little bit more obvious, and I, I, I orient them so they look the same, that actually the large one has an angle B, R, A, with angle R being right. This one has an angle R, E, A, and angle E, but notice something. Both of these have angle A. So, in fact, they have two angles that are congruent. So the big right triangle is similar to the smaller right triangle, REA. And the tiny triangle is triangle BER. It has angle E in there. And it has angle B. And it's similar to the large triangle that has also has angle B. So the tiny one is similar to the orange triangle. The, the medium size is similar to the orange triangle. So it stands to reason that the tiny is similar to the medium. So let's write that out. Uh, that triangle, well, just let's name them correctly. B, we said, uh, I don't know. Well, maybe we'll do B, A, R. Is similar. The triangle, so I went from, so to triangle R A E, which is similar to triangle B R E. That's the first step. So now we have have got three similar triangles. Okay, uh, and. To make things easier, we know that the sides are all going to be uh, proportional because they're all similar. Uh, and I want to put some letters in here just to make it a little bit easier. I'm going to put an X and a Y and an H. And then, so so that is the segment, you know, the, this hypotenuse divides it into X and Y. That makes sense? And so that X is BE. So where's BE? BE is right there. That's X. B is not on this triangle. Uh, e A is on this triangle. It's Y. And H is R E. Well, there's R E, and that's the H. Oh, and there's an R E, and that's H. So if I just concentrate on these two triangles, you could see that X compared to H, so this one, would equal H compared to Y. And that is indeed the same H. It's that altitude that I initially drew. 
uh, if I work with this a little bit with a little algebra, I can multiply both sides by H and multiply both sides. How about I multiply both sides by HY? On this side, the Y's cancel, leaving me with H squared. And the, this side, the H's cancel, giving me XY. And that looks pretty cool. And it is, in fact, pretty cool. It's saying that the length of h squared is equal to the product of x times y. Or, in other words, if I take the square root of xy, I can get h. And we are dealing with positive, because I'm, I'm geometric, I, I live in the, in the uh, real concrete world. I'm not talking about the, the negative square root. I'm only going to talk about the positive square root. So that right there is pretty cool and awesome. Now, it, it, it comes from the uh, similar triangles. and But this is a short, if you know x and y, then you can figure out what h is. Uh, another, there's a word for this. Uh, you know what the arithmetic mean is? The uh, arithmetic mean is the average of the numbers. That's how we do grades most of the, most of the time. Add them all up, divide by how many you have. This is called the geometric mean. And the geometric mean ta -da, is uh, of two positive numbers is the positive square root of their product. So in this case, like if I knew that x was equal to 5 and y was equal to 4, the geometric mean of those would be you do 5 times 4 and take the square root of that. And this would be h in this case, right? So h would be the square root of 20. And of course, we do not want to leave it like that. That's four times, so that's two root five. All right, so this brings us to our conjecture of today, the first one. And I have lost count of what number we would draw on. But the length of the altitude to the hypotenuse of a right triangle is the geometric mean of the lengths of the two segments which the altitude divided into. So that h is equal to x times y, or excuse me, the square root, the positive square root of x times y. And there's a picture for you. All right, you can hit pause if you want. Uh, I am going to move on and do an example. This, so now I've given you a right triangle that you know, there's a three, four, five. And now I didn't tell you what a or b are, or things like, that, okay? Now, you may think, well, if I know that's 3, 4, 5, I could probably do something with the Pythagorean theorem. And, you know, yes, there are ways of doing this. Uh, I think real quickly, we can, find, uh, we can find out what A is, right? Because our conjecture says that 4 would be equal to the square root of 3 times A. Right. And to get rid of the square root, so that would be 16 is equal to 3a. And I am doing the positive square root. So a is 16 thirds. All right. And then at this point, you know that length. And you're right. I could probably do the square root and do it. But I've got fractions. There's easier ways, actually. If you remember the orientation, that's a 3, 4, 5 triangle. I'm going to once again break it up. Here's, there's a 3, 4, and a hypotenuse is 5. Then I have this big triangle, this original. It's a 5, B, and 3 plus A. And this one is 4 for the short leg. A is the long leg. And B is the hypotenuse. Once again, we know what A is. It's 16 thirds. So, I can figure out what B is by using the 16 thirds, but I don't have to because I know that they're all similar. And so let's use the B and our original, the full, fully completed 3, 4, 5 triangle. All right. So that would, if we can do, we put the variable on the top on the numerator. So that's B over 4 would be the same thing proportional to 5, 2, 3. 
So multiplying both sides by 4, I get 20 thirds is equal to B. Now I've solved the triangle. I've got 20 thirds and 16 thirds. And it does make sense. If, and if you want to check me with my with uh, Pythagorean theorem, you'll see that it does indeed work. Now I, would, I will test you there that I think that that has got to be quicker and more efficient than squaring them and doing the square root of them. And you are going to make mistakes if you do that on me. All right. The second part of today's lesson has to do with areas. So I have drawn, sketched, uh, two rectangles that are similar with a scale factor of one half. And that's a dilation, one getting smaller of the other. And if it's a dilation, they are similar. Uh, two squares, I'm just sketching them out. So a scale factor of three halves and two circles with a scale factor of three. So what we're going to do is let's, I'm going to use variables because I, numbers are, you know, those are, well, let's just make this. This is X, this is Y. Scale factor of half, so I multiply every side by half, that's half of x, that's half of y. All right, the area of this one would be simply xy. The area of this one, oops, excuse me, that's a y divided by 2. All right, all right. This one would be xy over 4. All right. Scale factor of three fourths, excuse me, three halves. Uh, and if this indeed is a square, then all the sides are the same. So if this is S, this would be three S over two. This side would also be three S over two. Of course, a squares, that's S squared. This one would be, what, 3 halves times 3 halves. That would be 9 fourths S squared. You might be seeing where we're going. Uh, and once again, here's a scale factor of 3, 2. So if this has a radius of r, then if it's a scaled up version, this would be 3r. The area of this one would be pi r squared. And over here would be pi, that's 3r squared, right? So that uh, is a uh, pi 9r squared. So what I'm getting to is if you make a scale factor of 3, the area grows by how much? A scale factor of 3 and a half, the area grows by how much? Scale factor of one half, the area goes, grows by well, how much? You see it? And of course you do, especially right here, right? If the scale factor is three, now the area grows by nine. Scale factor three halves, the area grows by nine fourths. We went from S squared to nine fourths S squared. And one half we went to, and it's not quite as clear because it's just but one fourth. So the area has a ratio of one to four. The area has a ratio of nine to four. And the area would have a ratio of a scale factor of nine. Yeah? So uh, if corresponding sides of two similar polygons or the radia, radii of two circles are in the ratio of m to n, then their areas are in the ratio of n squared to n squared. That seems pretty quick, and I thought the other one was a little bit more cool. But I will get plenty of problems with that tomorrow. I'll give you the area. You figure out what the ratio of their sides. Uh, I think some practice with that will help. Uh, here are some problems. You'll see I have two triangles. Uh, oh, I should mark that. That's a right triangle. So is this one. This one, I, there's a right triangle in there, that, that, that 5, 12, 13, and I'm missing two sides, an A and a B. On this one, it's a 3, 4, 5, 
and I'm cutting it with a uh, hypotenuse and I want to know what so I, how, how big and that's five that five is cut into it's cut into an x and a y all right and how long is the hypotenuse excuse me the altitude and then of course two circles with the three inch and five inch what is the ratio of aerials of circle a to circle b